Greetings, patrons. Jay O'Keefe Fair with another Elder Thing update, plus Bilia and uh, some other creatures. Um, so I think I was telling you guys I was going to take a take a foundry and mold making class at Stony Brook Fine Arts, and I had my last first class uh, last Tuesday. Went really well. I already have three pieces removed from my desk that are currently uh, have been dipped and probably even possibly will be poured tomorrow uh, by the by the instructors. Um, I wish I could get in there to to do that with them, but I don't feel like I know them well enough to be asking them any favors at this point. I'm just kind of letting them do their thing and teach me what they want to teach me. And they were impressed. Everybody was impressed with my you know wax ability, but uh, I was trying to be low key and. I just want to get my crap done really bad, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to irritate anybody. Um, so I've been trying to like, you know, not take too much attention of, up in the class or anything. Um, it's very small, just a few um, retired, uh, retired, uh, you know, parents uh, that have taken it with me. So, uh, and, the, and the instructors are younger than me. So it's, it's interesting. It's a, a very interesting class. Uh, but everybody's super nice. So. Here's what's going on with Elder Thing. Um, my teacher was telling me that this thing is gonna is a troubled piece. It could, there's a lot of potential for shrinkage, which is where the metal kind of freezes and it does what it wants to do rather than follow on the shape of the piece. You know, um, looks cool, but not what you want in a casting. Uh, but I always love the, I always love to see what shrinkage looks like because it's 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 I love chaos. You know what I mean? Anyway. Um, so yeah, I had chopped him up, and now I think I'm going to chop him up one more time. I'm, I think I'm going to cut him in half this way, because uh, preventing the, the less directions that the, the metal has to flow all at the same time, the less chance of, of it freezing, of it cooling in certain areas while it's, while it's you know, filling others. Um, so if I cut this in half here, and find a good spot where the welding won't be too noticeable, you know, because you have to chase your where you put it back together. You have to put it back together for one, and then you gotta try to make it look like it was all one piece to begin with. Uh, that's why I've been trying to keep this piece somewhat detail like it's, it's not my most detailed work. Um, I would like to get into more detail, but I have to be very conscious of where. There have to be high points for the welds that will be kind of shiny so that I can easily just uh, wipe out the, the, the weld lines. And it'll look like it was meant to be that way. Um, so there's Elder Thing. Uh, this is Bilya. Uh, I'm super excited to get this guy done. Um, this is my, if, for those of you who have my email address, uh, jasonbiliaokeefe at gmail.com. Bilya, there you go. This is what Bilya is. Okay, because I know Billy, I, I always confuse the crap out of telemarketers and anybody who's asking me for my email for whatever, any reason. They're just like, why do you have such an insane email address? But this is why, because I'm trying to cast my piece and it was a way to kind of trick myself into, you know, like I have to see that word every day. You know what I mean? This is, that's, this is what I'm dealing with here. I got to like trick myself to do the right thing. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, so. Uh, yeah, this is this is the sprue system and the vents, which is to like again uh, kind of encourage the metal to push up all the way up to the top of the cup, you know, in the air and stuff like that, so that it's not uh, there aren't like missing pieces down here where it didn't reach, you know. Um, but my teacher seems to think that this is gonna work, so if they pour it really hot, and I've had a lot of luck in the past, so please, you know, pray with me that it comes out. So there's one half a billia. Billia the Punished One. He was my player character, my brother's uh, homebrew RPG. Oh, hold on. There we go. He brachiates through the trees. He's like kind of like an orangutan octopus. Well, not octopus. What would you call it? A quadrupus. <laughs> He's a quadrupus. Uh, and uh, he eats kind of like a fly. He like drips out of these udders on his face he drips like acid that he's and then he slurps up his food with his little mouth claws you know 
You know, these kind of a good way to grab onto his food to make sure it don't squirm away. Oh, the one nice thing about him, because he is a compassionate creature, even though he's a carnivore, uh, he feels bad about having to eat things. You know, it was, maybe he remembers being a human, because the punished were, uh, there are, they're basically uh, a species of mutants. They all come from one region, and they were cursed. So that each one of them, they kind of live forever, and they're, they're all these different horrific monsters. Very Clive Barkery. Um, but anyway, yeah, it was a cool campaign. I couldn't resist playing my own freak mutant and then making it. I drew it, and sculpted it, and made a, a ten-piece mold of it. And now I'm finally has the other has another copy, for example. That was the original sculpt. Uh, and now, yeah, now I'm casting them. So, Bilia, pray that he comes out because I don't want to do. He's a it's a lot of work putting that thing back together again. Um, okay, so that's Bilia, and Razabone, Razabone's a, uh, another, one of my infamous Dungeons and Dragons characters everyone hated, he's kind of like a gangstery Jabba the Hutt kind of guy, except he was, instead of putting you in carbonite, he, uh, he kind of trapped you in soul gems, <laughs> uh, anyway, that's a long story, uh, my wax pot, uh, I'm pouring, um, some puffy-faced moops. Uh, I wish I had brought down an example of my puffy-faced moop, but uh, I didn't. Uh, there's, I go to uh, these two restaurants is the, on Mass Ave with Clovis, and they're super nice to us. They're always like taking such good care of us. I'd like to ideally cast two of these and give one to each restaurant. Uh, one of them, I don't remember the name, but it's in, the, it's in uh, Porter Square uh, at the eatery at Leslie. There's a sushi bar. That, that I go to with Clovis all the time, and they are so nice. They they always give us free stuff, and they're super friendly, and they love Clovis. And uh, I told them, and people are always giving them art, and I'm like, I want to give you art. So I showed them some of my stuff, and they, they were like, yeah, that looks cool, because it looks like he's eating, because he's got like puffed out cheeks, like a squirrel. So that's, uh, that's what I'm doing for them. And then I figure I'll just make another one, and I'll give it to the Dumpling House, which is on Mass Ave, where we also go all the time. And they, I mean, they treat us like kings. Like, they, it's ridiculous sometimes, the amount of food. We can't even eat it. They just bring him so many, I don't know. They're just super nice. Um, so, yeah, as a memo, one of my hags. Anyway, uh, love, love a memo. Love all my hags. I got another one. In ceramic shell being cast right now, which is Mariel's favorite, Bloodwood. Um, but uh, yeah, can't wait to get that done. Uh, and I even poured another one of my grandparents' hands here. There's a lot of work that could have been done on this. Um, his his fingers need a lot of work. It was a dental alginate mold, and he was he was kind of when we when he did it, he, his hands weren't still so. Um, where my, whereas my grandmother's were, I mean, you can see hers is, looks a lot better. Um, but even so, it still looks like there's still going to be, yeah. Anyway, uh, I wish, I think I've taken photographs of the hands before, but um, there's only one currently that my grandmother still has, and uh, and everybody, everybody wanted one. <laughs> So I'm gonna maybe take this opportunity to make a second if I have the time, but I, there's a lot of detail work I gotta do on it, and possibly even pull another one from from this beautiful mother mold here, which it's a shame not to use more. It's just so it's such a good mold, which is funny story. It's made by a woman that was the instructor of my teacher now, who worked at the foundry that I worked at before she was even there. And her and her friends kind of like that were working there kind of like bought it from the original owners that I worked for as well before they were there and um, and yeah so now they're out somewhere out in way out in the edge of Massachusetts where it's gonna be really difficult for me to go to cast so it's all good that I'm going back to my old neighborhood literally I have to drive like, I basically, one of the quickest ways home is to drive down Quincy Street, which is a street that I grew up on. I mean, this is, talk about, like, just going back in time. This class is insane. It's like going back by Mass Art, driving by my old neighborhood, casting work again. I mean, I'm feeling pretty, pretty lucky and happy 
Um, but I've just slowed down so much on my parodia. You know, I haven't been doing writing or drawing or much any of that because it's just so time consuming and hard to do it all. Uh, but anyway, thanks for bearing with me. And, and uh, I hope you all have a great weekend. And I love you all. Thank you again.